This is problem 3.3-7 from our elasticity text. This is out of the third edition and before I get started on this I do want to note that there is a problem in the in the statement of this question. So it says uh, down at the bottom determine these quantities for a plane whose normal has direction cosines and in the third edition of the problem there is an error. There should be a slash right here so the, the unit normal or the direction cosines should really be 1 over the square root of 3, 1 over the square root of 3, 1 over the square root of 3. In the interpretation as direction cosines, the sum of the squares need to equal to 1, and that corresponds to a unit normal that has these components. All right, so let's see what this problem says, and we'll solve it. It says the stress tensor is, and they give it here, determine sigma n1, sigma n2, sigma n3, sigma nn, and sigma nt. All right, now in our book, let me uh, maybe use a different color here. What this symbol means are the traction vector components. So sigma n1, sigma n2, and sigma n3 are the three traction vector components. Now, it may not help that I've been using a different symbol for this, um, but the, the book's symbol is kind of non-standard, to be, to be honest with you. So I use the symbol T for the traction vector, and it has components that I call T sub I, and then to make that a vector with our index notation, I use E hat sub I. So there's a reason why I like my symbols better, and uh, we're going to stick with my symbols as I work through this problem. But that's the, the same thing that they mean. All right. Now the next thing I want to show you is I want to show you what the book does on this kind of problem. And it, personally, I find it a little bit irritating that they do it this way. And I'm going to show you, uh, hopefully, uh, an easier way conceptually to deal with that. But let's find the page in our book. All right, so this is in chapter three, and it goes through and talks about the Cauchy tetrahedron, which is basically the uh, similar to what we've done, with a little bit different perspective on it. So there's the Cauchy tetrahedron, and these are the traction vector components. Let me zoom in a little bit here. And so this is what they're ask, asking you to find: sigma n one, sigma n two, and sigma n three, composed of the unit normal components and these values here. Now they use index notation like this, um, where they're using a summation on the symbol alpha. And these are the stress vector, uh, the stress tensor components. Okay, so they have the traction vector, or they might call it the stress vector. It has the same units of stress, but it's actually a traction. It's a force per surface area. And you can use these equations in order to get the answer that they, they want you to get. But let me, let me kind of uh, explain a different approach that hopefully will make more sense after having, uh, you having watched the lecture videos. We saw in the lecture that in order to find the traction vector components, we would use the formula sigma i, j, and j. We have a symmetric stress tensor, so if I wrote it differently previously, it, it's going to be all right. Sigma i, j, n, j will still work. Now, we can do this, and then we would get the exact same equations that I just showed you. This would be sigma 1, 1, n, 1, plus sigma 1, 2, n, 2, plus sigma 1, 3, n, 3. And that would be for the T1 component. So let me not put an equal sign there. Let me put a symbol like that. And then I could do the same sort of thing. And I could get that equation for T2. And I could get that equation for T3. As we mentioned, our book likes to use the symbol. It's a little bit different. So they would call this sigma n1, sigma n2, and sigma n3. OK, so that saves you a little bit of time. But there's even a more efficient way to think about this. And that would be that I could say that the traction vector is equal to the stress tensor operating on a unit normal. 
So T is equal to sigma n. So if I want the three components, T1, T2, and T3, of the traction vector, all I would do it would be a matrix multiplication of my stress tensor times the unit normal. And I'll pause the video and I'll compute these. Um, but that's all we need to do. So it's as easy as that. And sometimes I find working with these matrices for these kind of problems so much easier than uh, working with the index notation. It's the same thing. The index notation is very valuable when we do derivations and so forth. But the direct matrix type representation is usually even more convenient when you have numbers to plug in for whole matrices. All right, well, let me compute those numbers, and I will be right back. All right, so this is what I got for the three traction vector components, 8 over the square root of 3 minus 2 over the square root of 3 and minus 1 over the square root of 3. All right, the more I look at this picture, the more I kind of wonder why that picture exists. But kind of the way I like to think of it is that we have the stress tensor sitting here in this material we have a unit normal to some plane that we're interested in. What we have just computed is the traction vector components and maybe it's, you know, who knows, off in this direction. I'm not trying to draw it at any particular angle. And what the next question is then is we want to find the normal stress on the inclined plane, sigma nn. So what we're going to do for that is we, what we want is the portion of the traction vector that points in the n direction. Okay, so wherever this ends up, this is our sigma uh, nn. And you know you might see me write this as the stress on the inclined plane sigma inc. So what we're going to do is we're going to project the traction vector into the n direction. The magnitude of that is determined just by the dot product of t dot n. Okay, so remember at the beginning of the semester when we talked about vector projection, and vector projection involves a dot product, so there we go. Now we have the t vector and we have our n vector, so we're going to have what um, 8 over 3 plus minus 2 over 3 plus this one times this one would be a, a minus 1 over 3. And so all together, when I add those up, I get 5 thirds. So that is the value of the stress on the inclined plane, the sigma nn, or the sigma inc. Now the last thing that I need is sigma nt, that is the shearing stress. And graphically, that would be the portion of the traction vector that is parallel to the inclined plane. Now, if we wanted to, I suppose we know the components of the normal stress traction vector in the direction. We know this that goes off in that direction, the total traction vector. So we could do a vector subtraction, but the other thing is, is that the distance here, the magnitude of the traction vector, uh, is, is this physical distance here. The, the magnitude of this vector is sigma nn. Okay, let me shorten this up. I didn't quite go as far. And then what's left that we're trying to find is the shearing stress. So what we can use, and we've done this before when we talked about the octahedral shearing stress, is we can use the Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So we have the magnitude of the sigma nn or the 
sigma inc vector squared plus tau on the inclined plane squared or the sigma nt that would be equal to the magnitude of the traction vector squared or if we rearrange this what we really want is we want the value for this thing sigma nt that would be the square root of the magnitude of the traction vector squared minus sigma n n squared so let's see what we can do with that so let me write it here um, this would be equal to the square root of okay the magnitude of the traction vector squared would be t dot t okay so 64 over 3 plus 4 over 3 plus 1 over 3 that whole term is this squared and now we're going to subtract away um, 25 over 9 and the value I got when I use my calculator maybe there's a cleaner way to write this but when I use my calculator I got 4.4969 Alright, so that's how to approach this particular problem.